six years old. But apparently we were not expected to be the brightest crayons in the box because they split us into the panda bears and the unicorns. <laughs> we weren't supposed to know that one group was super smart and special and the other wasn't. This panda bear had it figured out. <laughs> and then everybody clapped. And whether they clapped because they were finally, like it must have been painful for the teachers. But oh, so if they clapped because they were finally done, listening to Kelsey read and all of the students reading, or if it was just like, oh, the last kid that just finished the race. Good job, kiddo. Mm. But I interpreted it as a pity clap. And that is my first solid memory of what I call my gremlin or inner critic, which used to tell me you're not worthy. Went to grad school and that's where I studied killer whales. I did my master's on killer whales and toxins because they, the Southern resident population lives in the Pacific Northwest off the coast of Washington. And they're noticing these dents in their heads behind the blowhole. They're calling them peanut heads. Mm. And so it was just malnourishment. The wow. salmon stocks were going down. That's what these guys eat. And so they were losing body fat. Anything that you're saying that's, I'm not enough. I'm not good enough. I'm not smart enough. I'm not strong enough. Whatever it is, that's your inner critic. Mm -hmm. And if you haven't heard, if you haven't done the work on it and you haven't heard it for a while, then do something that scares you and see if it pipes up then. <laughs> and then yeah, because how crappy is it that we have this voice in our head that's telling us we're not good enough mm. we uh, you know maybe you're hearing that from outside yourself and that's one thing and if you are hearing it from outside yourself and you're not a little kid you're probably going to walk away from it you're going to be like i don't want this this doesn't make me feel good but when it's happening in your own head you can feel kind of trapped mm. so we transform that because hey this is the only mind you get on this go around. So let's, let's make it say positive things. Let's make it cheer you on. <laughs> there was one campground at Myrtle beach, South Carolina, that they were always blasting music in the bathrooms. That amused <laughs> me so much. <laughs> cool. And it was like a full on dance party. It was usually like nineties music. And yeah, if you're in there by yourself, you're just like, sweet. This total dance party moment. And that campground, actually, we also had a duck lay an egg under our camper. Wow. We were really worried about because we were leaving, and but something got to the egg before, ah. before we left. But we just had so many adventures. We, it was just, it's scary to do something for the first time. This isn't mm. like scary, like I'm getting attacked by zombies, scary. It's scary mm. in that there's some resistance. And I... I really like to celebrate fear. I like to acknowledge, what do you do? What did you do today that scared you? And by scared you, I meant like, what did you do? Did you really want to make that phone call? Was there a part of you that was like, eh, I don't want to. When we first moved into our house, we our, all of our stuff, which we'd put in storage in Maine, was still, it took two weeks to get here. So we moved in here and we had what we had in the camper. We had two plates, two bowls, two forks, two knives, two spoons, uh, like two pots. We had just the clothes we had had in the camper. Triathlon is my play. I love it. And I noticed that it feeds my, it feeds my business too. It was, talking about being a manifesting generator, the hyphenated people. We're like, when I'm in off season and I'm just doing easy rides and runs. I'm not so inspired in my business, but then we start throwing in some intervals and I'm like, all right, let's do this. They feel their whole description of their day is, I have to do this. I have to do this. You hear people talking in line about, it's just one complaint. They're just complaining together. When we remember who we are, we remember how supported we are by the universe. We remember that like, we're not supposed to know what we're doing. We're like our soul made these decisions for us. That's the human design gives us that piece. And we're just here to figure it out as we go along. We're here to experiment. We can't screw this up. 
when we do that, when I do that, things get brighter. Like the, the flowers on the trees right. pop a little more. And I think that's, it's really important to remember that we, we're not in charge of the timeline. Totally. I do the same thing. I have this personal rule. My dog is 12 and a half now. And whenever he asks me to play, I say, yes, I will stop mm. what I'm doing and go play with him because cool. one day he's not going to ask me to play. Mm, yeah. one day he's not going to be there. Like we are all total weirdos. And if you want to look at it that way, I just look at it like we are all, we have within us this unique spark, this inner genius, this inner brilliance, and that is our awesome. And we are here to share that with the world. The world needs it. The world is waiting for it. The world is craving it from us. And totally. it's our our gift to give it to them. Mm, it is. Mm-hmm.